when he signed this lease we see before us for 9,000 years. Imagine signing a lease for 9,000 years. It's a very substantial commitment. But Arthur is a man of great vision. He was ahead of his time. If you look closely at the bottom right hand corner, you can see Arthur's signature. Now you might already recognize this signature because today it still appears on every Guinness can and bottle all over the world. For over 250 years we have been brewing right here on site at St. James' Gate. And in fact up until the late 1980s, fermentation, the process where yeast is added into the brew, that took place right here in this huge pavilion. You mean water, barley, hops and yeast. Two thousand tons of Irish grown barley. That's a lot of barley. Barley, and we're very proud to say that we're the only brewery in the world of its size to roast all of our barley here on site. We roast it at a specific temperature of 232 degrees for two and a half hours and this is similar to the way a coffee bean is roasted so if you get the opportunity to ask in that aroma it smells similar to dark chocolate and coffee. Okay so each of these four ingredients are found in every single glass of Guinness no matter how big or how adorably cute. Can I get an all for the little glass? But is anyone able to tell me what colour in fact it actually is? Ruby red. Ruby red. I'm going to give it to the span here. So we have a round of applause. Um, yeah, in actual fact, it, you'll get two samples so you can drink that out. And this is because Guinness releases its optimal flavour between 4 and 7 degrees Celsius or 41 and 45 degrees Fahrenheit. So in order to fully appreciate all the attributes and flavours Guinness has to offer, you need to use all the areas of your mouth. So the front of your mouth is used to taste the sweetness of the malt, the sides is used to taste the roasted barley and the back of your mouth is where it tastes the bitterness of the hops. Overall you're going to get a smooth, rich, velvety kind of texture which is known as mouthfeel. Oh, and also, just in the head of the Guinness is where a lot of the hops are. So we're going to try and bring our lips through the head just so we don't get a really bittery taste. And we're going to experience all the other flavours as well. Can we all just look behind here, that man on the wall. That is the only known portrait we have of Arthur Guinness himself. 
He was born in 1725 into a small brewing family just outside Dublin. He inherited a hundred pounds off his godfather, which he used to set up his own brewery until there in Leedslip. And then he moved here to St. James's Gate in 1759 and he set up Guinnesses. And he married a lovely lady called Olivia Whitmore and together they had an astonishing 21 children, 10 of whom only survived to adulthood. Um, so when he passed, he left the brewery to his two sons, Arthur and Benjamin. The actual bell that was on the first liquid bulk carrier in the world, the MV Miranda Guinness, and it was used to bring Guinness from Dublin Port over to Liverpool. So um, when we ring this bell, we're going to have a huge cheer because this is going to mean that we're all Guinness tasting experts. <laughs>